Hi everybody, this is Dino Chris from Prehistoric Facts, and this will be the special episode, and today we'll be talking about one of the more famous dinosaurs and one of the most famous billysaurs of all time. And this this guy, Carnotaurus. And so <clears throat> Carnotaurus basically is around I think basically between uh, 25 to 30 feet long and uh, it's actually should it's basically a and its name in Latin is bull lizard basically bull lizard or meat eating bull excuse me and uh, it's basically found and it's found in South America mostly Argentina uh, lived in the Lake Cretaceous around 70 million years ago and it is actually weighed at one ton now the distinguishing features of Carnotaurus is basically it's one of the largest uh, abilisaurs uh, ever found and uh, and and it's ba and it has but basically the main but basically the great feature is the skull and the skull actually has here the the key feature to know it's a Carnotaurus is these is these really robust horns on on top of it, right on the right on its head right above the orbit right above the eye socket right here because here's where the eye socket here's where the eyes would be and so these horns are very robust so it would not surprise me that these actually were used for head-to-head -head combat basically just for mating rituals territory but even though I think males would actually have very brightly colored um, ones to show off to the females who but we don't know if the if like the robust horns are from females or males I would probably say the males because the males would actually have a more uh, stronger would probably have a stronger uh, built skull and in the, and basically in the skull here it's very it's a short robust skull and you and the reasons why abilisaurs were actually kind of actually evolving this is because you see uh, they're actually trying to strengthen their skull and so the reason why they have like this bulldog kind of kind of face is because you see they, they're trying to bite really hard even though they don't bite as hard as tyrannosaurs so when we look at other carnivorous dinosaurs we actually see they kind of start to have, kind of have these long narrow uh, skulls and they actually are either they don't really bite very they don't bite very hard and uh, their teeth are very fragile to to penetrating bone um, but even though when we look at look at abilisaurs their teeth are getting stronger as well but you see they're following the same way as tyrannosaurs just because they're actually getting a stronger bite and also their teeth are actually strengthening and the reason why they have short teeth is because they need to actually they need to actually ha don't need to have very deep roots in their in their jaws it, for their teeth it's because you see they don't need to actually um, go right through bone but even though they can penetrate the bone with their teeth just this, this take the case with Majungasaurus when we actually see that there's bite marks on some uh, on some uh, on one Majungasaurus specimen and so what we see here of of these animals is basically they're actually uh, very powerful biters they would actually probably they would probably be ambush predators they would probably be ambush predators I would not suggest they probably were chasing their prey abilisaurs when we actually look at their leg design uh, they are not really designed to be fast runners and you, reasons why is because when you actually have uh, a short robust skull and but also another thing about abilisaurs is that they have really short arms and basically they're really nubby they're shorter than tyrannosaur arms and so th that's the case with Carnotaurus is basically that you don't need to run fast uh, to catch your prey especially if your prey uh, doesn't actually move very fast at all so probably uh, sauropods would actually be the ma the main course for Carnotaurus so Carnotaurus would actually be chasing down uh, sauropods a lot more and maybe some armored dinosaurs uh, and probably some uh, um, iguanodontids that probably were still around in South America 
Um, but even though they actually are really designed to bite really hard, and you know, and Carnotaurus actually kind of actually became famous uh, due to the movie Disney movie called Dinosaur, the CGI film uh, about basically had taken place in the Cretaceous, um, where we see Iguanodon, Brachiosaurus, Pteranodon, Struthiomimus, uh, Velociraptor, uh, and all those kinds of animals. But even though a lot of these dinosaurs probably didn't, a lot of these dinosaurs didn't meet at the same time, it's because you see Carnotaurus lived in South America, and Velociraptor lived in China and Mongolia. Iguanodons basically were almost found all over the planet, and then when we look at, and also that we actually find Ceratopsians, like Pachyrhinosaurus in that film, and also Styracosaurus, find Ankylosaurus, the Ornithomimids, like Struthiomimus or Gallimimus, whatever they actually have in, the, in that movie Dinosaur, I think it's Struthiomimus, but, um, and also you see Pachycephalosaurus in there as well. It's because you see a lot of these animals were basically a lot of a lot of these a lot of these dinosaurs were actually placed in the wrong were actually kind of placed in the wrong time. Iguanodon were actually iguanodons actually lived around 100, 120 to 100 million 100, were always 90 million years ago, and so basically they would actually they would have not have faced a Carnotaurus. Um, <clears throat> Struthiomimus, Struthiomimus was found, was basically found in North America, so probably they would have never met a Carnotaurus. Velociraptor would have never met a Carnotaurus just because they're found on different sides of the planet. And also, um, Brachiosaurus would have never have lived in the Cretaceous because Brachiosaurus is actually found in the Jurassic. So that actually kind of puts some bad things in perspective in the movie. And, um, and they actually kind of put the worst thing about and even though they kind of make car even though in the movie they make carnotaurus really large as you see you see they're trying to you can see what disney was trying to do was trying to actually find a substitute uh predatory big predator to actually substitute it from tyrannosaurus rex is because everybody thought like me well tyrannosaurus rex is going to be in the film it's because it's the meanest and scariest dinosaur of them all but basically when you actually look at this look at this kind of dinosaur it's scary. It's still scary by the by the look of it by the look of its skeleton. It's a big animal. It would actually has a very it would actually have a very powerful bite. It actually has a bulldog like head. But even though you put it on steroids and basically you got yourself a mega Carnotaurus, so that's why that's why. But even though I think they did represent represent Carnotaurus very well, is that um not a very fast ant, not a very fast uh, predator. And uh, very robust, and probably would have actually uh, eaten anything you know that is actually coming across. But it's an ambush predator. And when we look at a uh brain cases, we see that they actually do have a very good sense of smell. Of course, because you, when you're a predatory animal, you need a good sense of smell. Um, you actually do have good sense of hearing, which is a good thing. But the vision is actually very limited, so vision is very limited in ability source. Because when you look, when you look at uh, Dr. Larry Wetmer of Ohio University's uh, CAT scans on Majungasaurus, what you see, what you see in the visual centers, what he says is that that the the visual centers, the optic lobe, is in terms of size is not really large it's relatively modest meaning it's mo it's a moderate size not really large not too small but even though it's its vision would be very limited and um, and the question was is basically do ability sores have binocular vision they might but it's very limited the only way they could probably actually see in binocular vision is basically if they dip their head really low, and basically that's how they can actually see further. But even though I don't think they pro even though I don't think they would have probably have done that, I don't think they would actually dip their heads um, like really like this like this far uh, to actually see in binocular vision. They probably <clears throat> and basically they would probably they would have side to side vision. So basically, they would have to come up from the side of the prey, and basically just take a bite, like real a quick bite, basically. But even though they want to go for the neck, because that's where, 
it's where you actually kill a lot faster. And so the neck is actually the easiest place to, to kill is because it's you can crush the windpipe, you can actually slash the jugular veins, and also you can actually uh, open the, you can open the throat and basically cut the air out of cut the air out of the prey and it would actually die a lot quicker. But even though uh, slashing the jugular veins would actually kill it much quicker. But you see, I think the Jungasaurus probably or Carnotaurus, excuse me. And most abilisaurs probably actually kind of killed like lion, kind of like big cats, basic, basically with uh, how they actually uh, grab the neck. But basically, they probably wouldn't actually use canines because because predatory dinosaurs didn't really have that. And so when we actually <clears throat> see this kind of see see this bulldog-like head, it would actually be easy to crush that windpipe, and also you can slash that jugular vein very easily. And another, and basically, when we get when we look at the arms of of abilisaurs and mostly carnotaurs, we see that they are very they are very small and they look really stubby. So, and we look at the the humerus, the upper arm bone, it would actually be it would probably be nearly nearly the length of mine, but even though it would probably be shorter than mine. But its forearm would be puny. It would be really its for the forearm, the radius, and arm, ulna bones. They were probably really, really small. And then you got the finger bones that are really stubby and short. And so they probably didn't have any functional use for those arms. So the arms would probably be useless. And whether or not uh, Carnotaurus was feathered. That's a question mark, but even though we we know that theropod we know that theropods probably did have some sort of feathers, but even though I'd say abilisaurs probably were a little bit more primitive like dinosaurs since they kind of almost came from the same family as ceratosaurs. So I would actually say that um, uh, basically probably maybe just a more reptilian kind of look, maybe have a little like uh, stubby like uh, like a uh, uh, stems of the of the feathers, so kind of near stage one. <clears throat> and of course, with the extinction of Carnotaurus, since it was actually living in a time in South, and basically in the time of South America, South America was changing rapidly. And also, we would actually see that it's actually that probably the environment probably actually had to do with it. But even though probably the global warming near the end of the Cretaceous is actually is actually because since that the heat radiating back into the atmosphere probably came from the oceans and so probably that the heat rose up and basically um, it couldn't survive in that kind of in that kind of climate but even though we don't know how, how Carnotaurus died it's because we don't know how many we don't know what caused many extinctions of some species I mean it's still up in the air whether or not it's climate whether it's uh, uh, regional uh, extinction, or otherwise, it just basically is just that um, um, probably new predators came in. New predators came in and basically just took away the prey, and basically there was probably, but also probably prey was very limited uh, near the end of the Cretaceous in South America. So, and basically, we don't know. We still don't know how, what what Carnotaurus probably have, how it disappeared. We don't know how it disappeared. So, but even though we still don't know if it did actually go beyond uh, 70 million years um, into the, the later part of the Cretaceous, near the end of the Cretaceous. All right, that's it for now. And uh, like I said from the previous episode, next this coming Saturday, January 31st, will be a new Answering Questions episode. So, so if you got a question about dinosaurs or any other prehistoric life, feel free to email me at dinochris71 at gmail.com or other ways you can or other ways. Follow the Facebook page, Prehistoric Facts with Dino Chris. Post the comments, post the questions in the comments section, and I can actually easily read it. But and I can read it better. And uh, you can also follow me on Twitter at symbol C S G R A L L in low caps. Still po post po cool stuff there. And you know, make sure to take care of the people around you. And also for you younger people out there, make sure to make sure to listen to your parents, your teachers, and your guardians. Those are the best advice you can have for good education. It's very important to have a good education because with a good education, you get a good job in the future. All right, that's it for now, and I'll see you guys on Saturday.